Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to handle null values in Azure Data Factory pipeline in Dataflow activity. We'll be using, uh, um, let's say we have some null values and we would like to change them to the unknown or, or not applicable or maybe even blank space uh, so we can do that as well. So we'll be using drive column transformation in this case. Um, so in this scenario, you will also get familiar with the drive column transformation, how to use that. We will be having multiple scenarios later on for drive column as well. Now let's go back here and uh, what we have, uh, we have our blob storage. Now in the blob storage, if I go to the containers, I have one input file that is a total sale.csv file. Click on that, get let's go to edit, and here I have ID, sale person first name, last name, and other columns. Now what I want to do, I'm gonna go ahead and make some null values. So for uh, let's say ID five, Najaf is there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete, and then I'm gonna also delete uh, John. So if you see that uh, now we are uh, producing uh, the null uh, data for a uh, sale person first name. Uh. So there are two null values. Um. Now we are gonna hit save here, and uh, after that we should close. And now we'll go to the Azure Data Factory. In the Azure Data Factory, what I can do, I can go to the data flows, and here I will create a new data flow. Now, before I do that, uh, I need to actually create a table, and uh, this is the table that we would like to create in Tech Wizard Azure Database. So, so this is as exactly same columns, and uh, if you see that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say not null. So this column cannot accept null values or sale person first name. If there is any null values, let's say we don't want these guys to be null because people should have the names. So we are going to create this table total sale in the tech results IT DB. Now, as of now, there is no data and we are going to insert the data from the CSV file to this table. Let's go back here in the Azure Data Factory data flow. Now click add source and here we will be making the data set click new and then Azure blob storage select a CSV file and then uh, we are gonna go to the link service new link service uh, and here I will be selecting my subscription and uh, providing the storage account to where my file exists um, so test connection and then creator now what we will do here we will select our container name and uh, we know that our container name is input uh, and inside that input we have a total sale file uh, so hit OK and yes our first row has header and now you can uh, import the schema from that file yes it is OK to do that and uh, we should be all good here now you can go to the projections here and take a look uh, right now these all columns are coming just fine uh, there are a couple of things I will show you after we run the first time uh, as of now I'm not gonna implement any drive column I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, try to insert the data into the sink uh, so that will help you to sort out uh, the issues or problems and uh, see how the error uh, information uh, uh, is shown in the Azure Data Factory. Now we will select Azure Database here, continue, and now we are going to select new. And here we'll make uh, our uh, link service uh, for our Azure SQL Database. So here is TechRazor ITDB, and my username is TB user, and my password is the DBA123 dollar sign. I always do that. Hit uh, connection and create. Uh, our connection is created. Link uh, service, sorry, our link service is created. Now we can select the table. We can create a new table, and I have done that. Uh, in this case, uh, we are not going to use this. Uh, so we will uh, use uh, existing table. Uh, import schema from this. Uh, okay, fine. Just leave that as it is for now. So we are all set here. Our data flow. I'm going to call this data flow DFT and uh, null values. That's the name of that. Now we are going to go to the pipeline, create a new pipeline, and here we will drag this uh, DF null values data flow. Now we can execute uh, or debug this one. I already have started the data flow debug cluster, and that was created uh, a few minutes ago. So we should be good to go and run our pipeline, and it is uh, in executing right now. So this uh, data flow actually should fail if you guys remember that because we have uh, said that our column here in this table is not null and we are getting some values which are null. So this should fail and uh, let's wait for the failure and then we see what error we get. So finally our pipeline is failed with the data flow as well. Let's go ahead and take a look here. You are going to click on error 
and uh, that's going to give you error. It is saying cannot insert the value null into column salesperson first name and uh, that's what the error is. Um, so we know that uh, we already created this error by ourselves. Uh, if you're going to go further take a look uh, on this uh, uh, you can take a look what type of uh, error this uh, looks like. Um, stop a video here and read the whole thing to understand so you can remember it for your future references. Uh, so close this uh, now we know that uh, it is not able to accept the null values, so we are going to take care of them. So what the options we have? Many times in SSIS and Informatica and other ETL tool, what we do, we create or replace those null values with some NA, not applicable, or we just say unknown, and or people suggest sometimes put the blank values. So it is your company decision how they would like to proceed with that hard code value for that first name or last name. So I'm going to click right there on the plus sign again and here I will say drive column. So you can uh, see the transformation right there. And uh, once you bring the drive column here, what you're going to do, you're going to go to the columns here. You can add new column or replace the existing ones. Uh, so in my case, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for salesperson first name uh, and I'm going to replace uh, with the expressions. Uh, so still the column name will stay as it is, but we will write the expression uh, to change the values. Uh, so here when you click on the expressions, uh, this expression box will open. Uh, there are a lot of functions available for us. Um, these are the list of the columns we have. And then uh, you have all those functions here. This is, uh, we, right now we are in all. Um, you can click on uh, functions. It will show you functions. Uh, you can uh, click on input schema. It is going to show you schema. If you have parameters, it's going to show you parameter or you create can create one. Uh, if you have to use a cache lookup, uh, that's going to be also available and locals. Uh, so we will explore these ones later. Now go back to all and uh, here what we need to do, we need to use some function. Uh, there is a function called if null. That means it is going to check uh, if the expression is null. If that is true, then we can replace the value. And uh, if uh, um, that's not true, we can just uh, simply provide whatever the value it is. So in this case, so when we are saying first expression, so we are going to check the salesperson first name and we are saying that if that's true, then uh, that's do unknown. Okay, so we would like to have unknown if this salesperson first name is true. Otherwise, we will have to have, if we would like to have a salesperson first name. That's our expression. So it is very simple. It is going to check this value. If it is null, it's going to replace with unknown. Otherwise, it will leave the value as it is. So that's all good. We are going to hit save and finish. And now if you want to go and add another column such as add column. And now we want to write the same expression for salesperson last name or any other columns you can keep doing it. So here, in the, if that's the case, so you will say I, I, if null and click right there. And here you will select a salesperson last name. And now if uh, you want to do unknown, that's fine. And uh, then uh, if that's uh, not null, just uh, place with the salesperson last name. Hit save and finish and you're all good. You can preview the data. Let's go and take a look on the preview data here on the source first. Uh, so let me show you, uh, it is going to show us some null values. Then we're going to preview the data on the drive column. So you can see here, salesperson first name has some null values, uh, and uh, you remember that we have uh, replaced uh, Najaf in the blank, and here uh, there was a John that we have replaced. Uh, so these two values are coming as a null. Let's click on drive column now, and let's uh, preview the data. So we refresh, and it should bring us the data. Remember that we have replaced the salesperson first name if it is null to the unknown. Uh, the same thing what we did the uh, salesperson last name if it is null, uh, we have replaced to the unknown. Uh, so we should see the uh, unknown anywhere where we have a uh, null values. Uh, see right there. So this is a uh, replaced with null, and also this is replaced with the null. Uh, there is no uh, last name that is null, uh, so that's why we are not seeing any unknown. Uh, that's fine. Now we are all good, and we can go ahead and execute our pipeline. Uh, there are a couple of things I would like to do it here. Um, okay, let's, let's run the pipeline and then we can fix that later. Now we execute our pipeline and this is going to show us uh, some information. Okay, it's in progress right now. Our data flow has been completed successfully. Let's go ahead and uh, we want to check here. You can click on this uh, glasses icon. That's a detail. It's going to show you all that uh, success. And you can click uh, right there. It's going to show you more details here. So you can see what is uh, happening there. So you can... Uh, you are all good here. You can click right there and uh, see how many rows are read and how much time it took and everything. So click on the drive column and you can take a look as well. So let's go back to our uh, uh, pipeline here and then uh, we are going to go to the SQL. 
here we are going to run select statement to select all the data from a total sale. So now you can see that uh, sale person first name where it was null is has been replaced with unknown and it was able to insert the data because now we have replaced it with the value. Also you see that the total uh, sold date is coming as the null. We didn't do anything with that and I can tell you why this is coming as a null. I'm going to go back to the data flow here and go to source and source options. Uh, go to projection here and in the projection uh, you will look for sold data. See right there it has recognized this one as a string and actually it is data. So I'm going to select the date and also I'm going to specify the format. The format it is coming is a month, day, year. That's what the format is coming. So that should take care of it. Also, there is one more option we can do that we can insert the file name. So if you say file name and that this should be good, it was going to get the, get us a file name and load to the table. Now, as we have already loaded the data, I'm going to go to sync and I'm going to do go to settings and I'm going to say truncate table and the reload. So you don't have to truncate table every time. I'm just truncating in my case for testing. So, but if that's the case, if you are using this uh, data load for staging, every time you need to truncate, you can go to sync and uh, click on truncate table. It will truncate the table first and uh, then reload. That should do all the things uh, what we are looking for. Let's go to pipeline again. And now we can uh, debug. Our data flow and pipeline has been completed successfully. Let's uh, review our data. Now we are going to go and run this select query again and you can see that uh, the first salesperson first name where null values were it was replaced with an unknown and also sold date came fine as uh, we have added a new column called the file name that has brought us the file name as well so we are good here now the last thing what i would like to do here and uh, sometime we don't want to replace with the uh, some values such as unknown and all that people are replaced simply with the uh, blank space so that's possible not a big deal you just remove this unknown and now this value if it is null then it will be placed with the uh, just blank space as a blank space is not null that will be able to insert the data into the table let's save and finish and now we can go ahead and run our pipeline last time and it will uh, load the data so wherever it find null it will just replace with the blank space Again, replacing null values uh, is uh, not your decision. It is a decision of your company how they would like to treat those nulls. Uh, so consult, consult with your manager or a team lead uh, how they want to handle the null values. Uh, they might have some specific word uh, such as uh, like uh, maybe NA or unknown or uh, you know not available or all that different uh, companies use different. Uh, also, some of the companies that uh, they would like to not load the data at all if the values come in as null so that you can redirect those rows i will show you in next videos how to redirect null values to some other file or table and just load the non-null values into the destination table let's go ahead and execute our select query and now we can see that see right there so as i have placed the the null value with the blank space that's what we are getting in our sale person first name wherever it was a null in the file rest of that everything looks fine thank you very much for watching what i will do i will put this uh, total sale.csv file in the description so you can take and experiment also i will put uh, the code for creating table so it will help you to experiment on your side quickly thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel and i will see you guys in the next video